Welcome to Spera Marketing, the podcast where we innovate, create, and appreciate. Powered by Mostly Automotive Marketing with Matt Wilson. Here's the host of Xperra Marketing, Chief Xperra Marketer, John Karasquilla. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome back to Xperra Marketing. I am your Chief Xperra Marketer, Colin Karasquillo. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the podcast where we innovate, create, and of course, appreciate ways for marketers and advertisers to generate new opportunities for business. Without further ado, I'd love to bring on my co-host, my trusty steed in advertising, Mr. Matt Wilson. Hello, Matt Wilson. How are you? Hello, Colin. How you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Before we get down to business, I do need a couple housekeeping items per usual. I should just hire a maid, my housekeeping maid. Yes, but, uh, yes. With that, let's thank Jim McCarthy at Jim McCarthy Voiceovers. That's Jim McCarthy Voiceovers.com, currently on the screen. Jim McCarthy can help you out with all of your audio and voiceover needs. I think he also does something with lighting too. Is that correct, Matt? He does. He's owner of a lighting company called Big Dot Lighting, which does LED parking lot lighting for car dealerships. There you Fun go. Fact. So he can handle basically everything you would need from lighting your lots to making sure that you have the most killer voiceovers for your dealership, or should you try to start a podcast like we did, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep, he's the man. So with that, I also want to congratulate you, Mr. Matt Wilson. It's a very special time because finally, Mostly Automotive Marketing with Matt Wilson is being recognized as it should. I know, uh, and I don't know if I can announce it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So if I get in trouble, sorry. But uh, oh, wow. we launched a partnership with Dealer Marketing Magazine, which is incredible. So congratulations. You've been inducted to their expert panel which I believe consists of 30 uh, individuals from the automotive industry, some big names uh, out there. And so you get to rub shoulders with them to go check out Matt as the sponsored podcast, your featured podcast on there. Go to dealermarketing.com. So congratulations. Yeah. How do you Thank feel? you. I feel great. I'm excited. They're good people over there. They have great content for uh, automotive. And like you said, the experts, the... Um, the thought leaders in our industry that contribute to that magazine are lots of lots of heavy hitters, and I look forward to uh, interviewing lots of them on uh, on my podcast. No, that's great. So Matt's podcast is mostly automotive marketing with Wilson. Uh, he, he does live episodes as well as pre-recorded episodes, uh, just like Xperia Marketing. We are primarily pre-recorded, but that's okay. If you want to check out the live stuff, go check out Mostly Automotive Marketing with Matt Wilson. You could see that on uh, basically he has YouTube channel, Facebook, LinkedIn, so on and so forth. And then anywhere that you guys listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple podcasts, so on and so forth, you can find it there. I actually recommend the episode you just did with Melody Borden, uh, Melanie Borden, excuse me, from Celebrity Motor Cars about reputation management. That was really, really great. And I think there's a a lot of good insight that both you and Melanie provided to the dealer community. So thank you for doing the dirty work, but now the dealers uh, definitely can take that to heart and make some great things happen with reputation and, and all the positive benefits with SEO and so on and so forth. So very, yeah, very for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she's great. She did a great job. They got it together at her group, man, with reputation management. They got a system, a process. It's pretty cool. All right. So with that, let's get to this episode, Experiment Marketing Episode 8. And well, I'll ask you guys, yeah, what should we call this episode? So this is a very interesting topic. And for me, I love the topic that we're going to dive into. So our two options, I don't know if you can put them on the screen there, but we have Automation Nation or we have Rise of the Machines. And you know, Matt and I were talking about this earlier and Matt, what was your input? I think you liked one better than the other. I like automation, automation nation, uh, even though it's hard to say. I like that because Rise of the Machines sounds like some kind of like sci-fi end of the world movie that creeps me out a little. A uh, little, little Terminator. Which one, <laughs> which, one you, which one do you like better? I, you know, I think also automation nation. I think that that rolls 
rolls off the tongue very nicely, uh, although not alliteration. I like the rhyme scheme behind that. So I think that <laughs> we'll call this episode Automation Nation. And if you listeners out there could not tell, today with Automation Nation, we're going to talk about automated marketing, machine learning, maybe get into some artificial intelligence, so on and so forth. Uh, but with that, we have an expert from the automotive industry. It's Aharon Horwitz. He is the CEO of Auto Lead Star, which I mean, I'll tell you, Auto Lead Star is, is basically next generation level uh, marketing technology. And we're very actually happy to, uh, to partner with Auto Lead Star. So there he is joining us all the way from Israel, where it's now 713 at night. I hope you had your, your coffee or energy drinks or whatever you drink to, to be ready for this conversation. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thanks for having me, Matt. Thanks for having me, Colin. It's great to sure. be here. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely loaded up on caffeine. You do not need to worry. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us. You know, like I mentioned, CEO of Auto Lead Star. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and then of course Auto Lead Star and what you're doing over there. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Experi Marketing is amazing. Mostly automotive marketing is amazing. We're big fans of it. We listen to it here all the way across the ocean. Um, you. Hey, as you can hear, I grew up in uh, in the U.S. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, kind of a beleaguered Browns fan. Still hoping for that, for uh. that success <laughs> season some, at some point. Um, and I really come from a background. Um, it's probably a little different in, in the industry in some ways. Um, most of my uh, sort of formative experience prior to Auto Lead Star was actually in building socially impactful um, startup businesses. So I started something in um, 20, 2007 that was aimed at trying to take entrepreneurs and help them launch things that could be impactful on society. What was interesting about that was that it was all driven by kind of the transformation that technology was creating. So it's kind of a positive take on technology where you saw that you know, for a fraction of what it cost you in 2000 or 1990, you could set up a huge technology infrastructure that would lead to scaled impact. And that power was powering all sorts of new businesses, what then was called like Web 2.0. And I and my friends saw that, wow, we could actually leverage that technology for social impact. So we actually built out a whole like incubation network um, called Present Tense all over the world. And uh, I was doing that, got a lot of experience with like, you know, entrepreneurship with leveraging technology, with figuring things out with, uh, you know, very innovative and new approaches to uh, the sort of emerging, you know, web infrastructure. And, it, you know, a bunch of years ago, myself and two friends, we, we sort of felt really passionate about um, small medium businesses and the seeing that they were essentially being um, just eliminated from the playing field mm -hmm. by kind of mass scaled uh, retailers. And that that was something that we also felt technology could potentially serve the small folks, not just the big folks. And so we got together and launched a company, uh, a buddy of mine who was in the military with me uh, and another friend of ours from university. We got together, we launched a company and we basically decided we were going to take the most advanced tech that we could uh, get our hands on. And my two partners were technologists themselves or our technologists. And we would build it in a way that any small, medium business could use to drive um, their own marketing and sales enablement forward and compete with anyone out there. We didn't care if it was you know the biggest of the big, the Walmarts, the Amazons, the Googles, the Costcos. We wanted a, a small retailer to have the same firepower as those folks. And that was the mission of the company when we started it. Um, and we just got extremely lucky over the years. Uh, we stumbled into automotive. Now I was living over in Israel. Israel, for those who don't know, is a major hub of technology, including companies like Waze and Mobileye, but really some of the most advanced in AI, marketing on them, all that buzz stuff, it's coming out of Israel. Um, having the US background, I also had deep roots in the United States. And one of our advisors uh, said to, to me, go look at car dealers because they represent exactly what you want. Community businesses rooted, they employ people, they have a positive impact on society. And if those folks, uh, could get the technologies you guys are developing, they would actually be able to compete in that next generation when they're going to be going up against the scaled players like the Costco's, the Amazon's, and then also the pure play digital players, you know, the, the Carvana's and whatnot. So that was kind of our origin uh, and how we came to automotive. 
um, and launched Auto Lead Star. It's been now five years since we've been in the auto industry. It's been an amazing education. Uh, we learn every day from dealers and you know from the industry. But what we're building is, uh, I think, the the most advanced marketing automation layer that a dealership uh, can actually get its hands on. And it is very much, um, you know, I could talk a bit more about it, but it's it's kind of it's it's responded to the changes that, ha that have happened over the last seven years in marketing and in sale in digital sales enablement. No, it's, that's incredible. So I know for a couple of things, right? So you just unpacked a lot of great stuff. One, you had mentioned military, which I was unaware that you had served. So here it's a Veterans Day, right? So thank you mm. for your service and sacrifices. Uh, we, we truly appreciate it. You know, Matt and I obviously uh, appreciate our military personnel, whether active, retired, so on and so forth. So thank you for that. That's the first thing. Uh, now with that, what the, the meat and potatoes, if you will, of this episode is about marketing automation and machine learning. So for those listening out there, I mean, you just, I feel like I'm talking with Steve Jobs. I mean, quite frankly, it's a lot of great. <laughs> oh, things. no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not the technical one in our team. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just the talk about it guy. Yeah. No, that's good. You're the idea man. And you know, everyone needs that, that person that gets out there and talks about it. Because if you know, no one talks about it, no one's going to know about it. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about uh, marketing automation. Let's talk about machine learning. So from a, I guess, you know, we'll say that 10,000 foot view. Can you just explain to dealers and, and advertisers who might not be aware of it, what marketing automation and machine learning is? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll do it through um, an experience we all had because most of us had jobs interacting with people in our life, right? Uh, you know, be it as like a sandwich shop where I, you know, I worked and people came in to buy sandwiches, be it in, you know, a, a retailer, wherever you are, be it a car dealership. So I think the best way to come at it, and then we can, if you want, get a little more technical, but high level, there was a time not that long ago where um, you, as a salesperson, had the opportunity to sit face to face with the person and watch them. So imagine an up walking into a dealership, right? right? That happens today still, but but they came in and you could look at them and you could say that person, I could tell just by looking at them. And I don't know, some sense I have as a experienced salesperson, some EQ, I could tell that they want this vehicle or they're not interested in that. I should give them a little bit of time, let them walk. Don't jump on them, back off. Or, hey, they're lost. If I don't get with this person right now, they're never gonna have a way to, uh, you know, um, uh, find a vehicle or, Hey, this person is sensitive to finance. They're not sensitive to, uh, other things that I might be able to offer them. Those types of insights in some ways are, are exactly what technology is trying to get back to. Meaning, um, we've essentially sacrificed those human intuitions with all the different types of marketing and technology we've done, because by definition up until recently, most marketing is like billboards on the internet right? A billboard is non-specific. It doesn't touch you personally. It touches a general broad segment and it can actually drive a sale because uh, it's not speaking to your particular needs, right? It's not speaking to who you are as Colin or Matt or whoever it might be, right? So yeah. So I our, our whole approach is to say the following. Well, over the past like five, 10 years, the platforms like Google, Facebook, uh, websites, every, every, consumer is buying online and the platforms have gotten so complicated that if you approach those with the same methods that you used in 2005, 2010, 2015, and even 2019, where you would go in, do dials, pull levers, switch things around, you are simply not going to take into account all the data and rich information and all the possibilities that they give you. And so the mission of a marketing support to a business, you know, a company like Auto Lead Star, but every company that does uh, marketing support for a uh, small, medium business retailer like an auto dealer, their job is to figure out how to take all the data into one hub, how to give that data, how to organize, clean, structure that data, and then how to use automation to run the advertising full stop. Now, that doesn't mean you take the person out of it. Right, you use the person brings strategy. They bring vision. They know what they want. They build a good business. But the marketing's job is to take all that information and figure out how to use the platforms, Google, Facebook, whatever it might be, to get to one-to-one -one matches with the customer, just like and never as good, but as good as possible as if they were in the showroom with the salesperson. Mm -hmm. So really, what the marketing automation, the machine learning, the AI, the automation, 
all that stuff, it's to take the stuff that humans don't do well, tur turning the dials, running thousands of experiments over the course of three hours, and then making, you know, picking something to take that stuff, put it on the machines and let the people do what they do well, which is really, frankly, sell cars, interact with people, come up with vision, with strategy, with creativity. Um, so that's my, I think it's important to say that. And we think of that as one, we call it like O-N-E, like one level marketing. It's one data hub, it's one-to-one -one matches, it's one brain that is running the whole thing so that people aren't getting pinged by lots of different email threads, by lots of different ads that don't make any sense. When they come to the website, they see things that they didn't click on on the ad level or on the, the website. It just doesn't make sense. Let's get one brain to give that customer a very, very powerful focused experiment. And all the automation and AI and all that should all come to do that. Um, right. You know, again, we could talk more technical, but that's that's just why it's there. Because I think starting with why is more important than what it is. Sure. Yeah, no, I would agree. And I think one of the biggest things, you know, for, for dealers that are listening in, you know, embrace the technology, right? We're going to say something that I think a lot of dealers are, are familiar with. And it's the idea now switching gears a little bit, but behind digital retailing and how digital retailing was this massive buzzword, right? And then obviously with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, everyone rushed to adopt digital retailing, including customers. And what that was for was to enhance the customer experience. Now for dealers listening, this is another one of those buzzwords, right? Marketing automation, machine learning. But I believe it's something that dealers absolutely need to adopt or at least consider adopting because it works hand in hand with the other experiences that we just discussed, like digital retailing. We're talking about providing a customer with a great customer experience, right? Be, uh, yeah. 2020 and beyond moving forward, people are saying that customer experience is going to be one of the key factors in whether or not someone chooses your dealership to do business with. What the machine learning and automation allows you and your teams to do is provide that seamless experience across the tier uh, one you know, platform to tier two advertising all the way down to tier three to the dealer. It's consistency. Talk about that as a great customer experience, right? I mean, is that's that's essentially what you're getting at with this machine learning and automation, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's where we're all trying to go. The fragmentation and siloed sort of nature that characterizes what we've done until now as dealers and marketing as dealers, it does not sell. And every dealer knows it doesn't sell. Every dealer would love to get away from all those problems of you know, uh, duplicate touch points that they had no idea were happening. They don't want it because they know the customer doesn't want it, right? You want to know that you're adjusting to that customer, fitting them like a glove and bringing them in with a great customer experience, Colin, as you just said. When it comes to AI as a concept, I mean, let's 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 just sort of, I guess, make some order a little bit like with that. I mean, look, AI is a very broad field, artificial intelligence. It's, it's a, if you take a step back and think about what they're saying, it's a freaky thing, right? We're trying to create intelligence that is artificial. I mean, it's it's almost like gets into philosophy more than it is into, you know, kind of like marketing, right? It's science and religion and philosophy, right? Artificial intelligence. That That's a broad term. I think most companies that use it are using it almost as a loan or a renter word to just say, we do things with automation that you would have had to do with yourself, uh, with your people, with your agency, with your, you know, your, your consultant, your vendor. AI automates that. I think that's a, that's typically what most people in automotive uh, are saying. In some fields, <laughs> there's real freaky AI. Uh, and we know those fields because, you know, those are fields we're all concerned about and we're going to have to deal with through legislation and in public debate. But machine learning is very interesting. It's kind of a subset of AI. Um, you know, machine learning is, is basically just saying uh, we want to build computer algorithms. I mean, I guess the broadest definition, computer algorithms that can learn from experience, right? And I think that, again, it's um, a little bit focusing too much on the widget to, to talk about, oh, do you have machine learning? Do you not? No one's ever going to know if, if a company has machine learning or not. And frankly, a company doesn't always need machine learning to be successful uh, in this day and age. So there are cases where you need machine learning, cases where you don't, and other things work. And, you know, and I think a good technologist that's a good a company with real technology can kind of navigate their product through those different tools and determine what's going to be best for the customer, uh, both the end user and the you know business that's using it, like a dealership. Now, now that we have an understanding of automation, marketing automation, machine learning, right? So don't be alarmed, people. This is 
not the robots that will rise up and, and take over. Now I see what you're saying, Matt. Rise of the machines. Automation is, is, nation. Yeah. Automation nation. <laughs> that's, much better. that's why we're going with automation nation. There you go on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's I thought that was awesome. Automation nation. I'm talking about rise of the machines. And rise. So, you know. <laughs> so with that, though, uh, you know, let's talk about the benefits, though, because I, I think, you know, uh, originally I will say this. I've sat at some dealer conferences representing some of the OEMs that our dealer group represents. And uh, this was specifically at uh, Google. And we sat there and they were talking about marketing automation. And I'll tell you, the first thing I thought as a marketer is I said, this is going to put me out of a job. And I was concerned at that point in time because I said, all right, we're developing technology, which in the end should benefit the dealer, but then why would they need me, right? Why would they need a live person? And the fact of the matter was, I just want to touch on this because I think that this is where a lot of fear for marketers or dealers might be, is that like you had mentioned, you still need a person to feed all of that data to monitor what the machines are doing, to make sure that you're getting the results that you ultimately want. And those results most likely will be beneficial to your dealership. But you know, for those listening, marketers specifically out there or, or representing dealerships, don't be afraid. This is not something that you should uh, fight. This is actually something that you should welcome, right? That you should embrace. This is gonna make you better, just like digital retailing, right? For customers, you wanna provide them with options on how they can purchase their cars. It's the same thing on, on marketing, right? You want to provide them with these hyper personalized messages on the platforms that, you know, they're on what resonates with them. So I think that that's why this is exceptionally important to at least put the topic out there. Now, now understanding it, as I've mentioned, why is it beneficial for dealers to take advantage of machine learning and automation? Aside from what I just said with customer experience and this hyper personalized marketing, what else, uh, you know, could come out of this? Right. So a, there's a lot of benefits that I think you get when you have a proper um, kind of technology, meaning I read some quote in, uh, I don't know, some report, some uh, consulting firm did. They said that, you know, they truly believe dealerships are going to be around for, you know, for a nice long while going forward. But for the, to, to be successful, they're going to have to operate more like technology companies mm -hmm. than they are uh, that, than, than, you know, more uh, brick and mortar retailers. Their advantage is having brick and mortar. That's huge, right? That's a wonderful thing in this kind of dystopian digital era, right? To have a real store with real people who can help you, who, who know you. I mean, who doesn't want that? I want that. We all want that, right? But they need to innovate and market like a tech company. So I would say what, what a, you know, we, again, we think of this as like the one, this like emerging one tech generation, you know, where it's this single brain that's going to con control the, the, the automation aspects of a dealership's marketing that gives the dealer the ability to compete in a way that they never have before. Um, and I'll give you an example from a client of ours. And this is like a very, this is one of those little things where I tell a story, but you know, it's, it's a single example, but you could abstract this out to a lot more. Uh, I just love this example. It was a great one. Um, there was a dealer uh, who is in a snowy part of the country and uh, they have the frequently snow plows sitting on their lot, right? Had some old snowplow that had been sitting on their lot for like two years, three years. Used car manager didn't have the heart to just you know make it go away, and um, and it was just never like sold right. Now I know for a fact, just because statistically, there's it's got to be right that in that region, occasionally someone is searching for a snowplow, and I know also for a fact because I have access to all their their historical data or a subset of their historical data. I know that that person had that snowplow on their lot. So what was happening? There were searches going on, on over here for snowplows or or that person was on Facebook looking at for, like looking at pictures of birthdays and there was a Netflix ad that they were seeing, right? And over here, the person had the inventory. What was missing was that connection, right? And the reason that connection didn't exist is that for the uh, manual driven marketing strategy that they had or not strategy manual driven tactics they had that uh, you know they had an agency super awesome agency uh that was like you know building out their ads and campaigns it was just not worth it to spend time on that snowplow so they probably mm -hmm. made an ad maybe at some point in the history maybe they put in a few keywords maybe they put something in on facebook but there was not a 24 7 obsessive focus on selling that snowplow to someone who wants that snowplow 
Why? Because it's not cost effective. You, if, you're, if you have a, a team of five people who are also working on other accounts and also have other things to do at the dealership, they don't want to be in Google all day long, you know, playing around with experiments on that snowplow or in Facebook all day long, testing different audience types and, and whatnot, things that you can play with in, 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 in Facebook. That is the job for a machine. And mm -hmm. when you put a machine on that job, the machine sits there obsessively thinking about only one thing. This snowplow, if I don't sell it, I failed. Um, and I need to sell the snowplow. And when you do that, you sell the snowplow. And so I think that's a little story. Uh, you know, if that person at 3 a.m. got off shift or is going on shift and they're doing a quick check on their phone before they go on shift, I don't, I know they need a snowplow. They broke the night before, right? I, don't let that Spotify ad show up. Don't let that insurance ad show up. Show my ad for my snowplow because I'm gonna get that lead. It's gonna be a good lead. So I'd say that for me is like the best example of where automation and AI, machine learning, all that stuff. Again, it's not so much machine learning in that case, but it involves aspects that you know come back to the technology's power. Um, that doesn't replace a human, right? The human has to decide what cars you get. The marketer has to think about interesting ways to present their brand to be an identity. The marketer has to say, hey, we don't need used cars right now. We don't, don't do trade-in, we're done. We don't need trade-in, it's too expensive, it's not working. Whatever those strategies are, then the machine should know how to adapt to those strategies and do all that boring, laborious work of testing at scale 24 seven, speed scale and specificity. Do it fast, do it all the time, get it on every service and every vehicle that dealership has and make it super specific to that one customer, the snowplow buyer. So that's right, like right. my my little deal. I will say like on machine learning and algorithms, look, there's been a lot of innovation around algorithms and machine learning when it comes to marketing. Um, there was a time where, um, hey, are you guys picking up a ton of noise in the background? I'm not hearing anything. Okay. I had something like crazy uh, car just started out there and it's making a lot of noise. We'll see. All right. Well, anyways, <laughs> okay. the uh, Show those on. Speaking of automotive, automotive nation here over, over here. Yeah. The, you know, the thing about the algorithms, like machine, like what you choose to use in order to get better results really should depend on what works best and what's appropriate. So, right. you know, there was a lot of, everyone knows AB testing, right? That's a common thing, right? And then AB testing went to like, you know, people started working with, with, uh, with, um, I don't know, these like, uh, multi arm banded algorithms and then contextual multi arm band and then machine learning algorithms started creeping into marketing and there's all these different techniques you can use to try to figure out what's going to speak to a person when you don't know a lot about that person or when you do know a little bit about that person right so the specific algorithm they're using have no idea and probably it should change a lot as they experiment but you want to know that they're technology and they're really using algorithms and it's not rule based person you know does this then send them that that's that's typically today a little too weak to get super results and to really run automation. So let's look at uh, KPIs then. I Sorry, mean, was that like a super conversation killer? My answer there? No, no, I mean, no, 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 we adapt. Listen, Matt, well, Matt's probably more of a pro at this than I am. I just, uh, I say, okay, and then we, we move on. <laughs> I, I, I go to you for the creative vision and you just need a machine to do, to execute your, your wishes, right? That's what it's about. Yeah. That's that's really it. I mean, had that and I could just speak into it and the work gets done. That's that's ideal for, for me, for sure. Um, so so with that stated then and, you know, it, it's definitely could be uh, overwhelming for some dealers to understand, but just they need to realize that what it does is it's taking a lot of the guesswork out of what uh, the human element would normally do right and a human would say okay i need to build out these customer profiles and i know that if i want to serve this ad to this specific customer there's a lot that goes into getting that done whereas if you just tell the machine basically okay here are the vehicles we have on the lot you know figure out how to advertise to them the machine's going to do it and in most cases do it better than uh, an individual uh, would ever you know be able to do it so i think there's definitely value to that Let's talk though about um, you know these KPIs, so key performance indicators, and what dealers are looking at. I think there was actually uh, congratulations on this too, but uh, Digital Dealer uh, had released a article or an article on Auto Lead Star, and it was talking about um, a, a dealership that had uh, reduced its expenditures. Actually, I think from eleven thousand dollars to eight thousand dollars, and I'm, I'm sure I was probably using your full uh, product suite, so search, display, and social. Um, but they end up increasing, you know, lead volume and ultimately sales. So when we look at that in terms of the cost reduction that they had, is that really, can we attribute that cost reduction and that efficiency to the machine learning and automation? 
Right. So that's like obviously the million dollar question, which is, <laughs> you know, uh, I think I, I we had a guest on uh, on our podcast, um, um, Matt Lasher from uh, West Her and uh, yes, Colin, you know, who also right? made, also made an <laughs> illustrious appearance on that podcast. But basically what, what Matt had this great um, this great article I saw on, uh, on a LinkedIn or wherever he put it up was about like the prop the, the propaganda war in Detroit, meaning do we really know anything or is it just that big, big corporate companies are convincing us that they, that this is the way to do advertising today? No, this is the way to do advertising today. And you know, it's, it's always sometimes hard to, to know. And I know that, you know, because you, you deal with this, it's the, the war for credit in the CRM and in the DMS is unbelievable, right? I mean, everyone wants their name next to that high close rate in, in the right. CRM. I, I'll say this. I, I think it's important for any vendor. Again, I'm not talking about vendors who have like a pretty, you know, basic, simple service. It is what it is. You know what it is. But when you want to get to that kind of one level where you're running a marketing automation framework and infrastructure, your your vendors need to have a point of view, and they have to be extremely rigorous uh, around executing on that point of view. And all KPIs need to surround that that point of view, and that point of view needs to be extremely transparent. Uh, and you need to be able to see if that point of view is is holding true. And that point of view has to get as close as possible to the sale because that's what you know what we all care about, right? So what we've adopted here, and I think others will adopt other things, we've tried to move away from metrics that are like um, you know, cost per click and click through rate. And again, we also do stuff on the website. We do conversion optimization. I mean, our platform does paid marketing, our platform does conversion on the website, and then it does data mining and some other things. But but not to speak about like that, um the the metrics that most of us are looking at are just noise. Um, unless it's your point of view, you believe that clicks is all that matters. If you get clicks, doesn't matter where they're from or whatever, it's going to be good for the dealer. We do not believe that. What we believe is that there's one metric that you can really get yourself around and that is cost per quality lead. Okay. So cost per quality lead is our metric. All other metrics to us are secondary. And what we care about is getting that quality lead down to as low as possible. And how do we define quality? Well, we've identified... And again, here's where you work on data sets and you kind of, you know, you train your system, you, you look at analytics to see whether or not the lead, what lead sources generate sales. So for us, getting someone in through one of those lead sources or with these certain characteristics, that defines them as, as, as quality. We want to get those as cheap as possible. Now, here's where the balance between the, the machine and the people come in. If you just let our machine run on, you know, your, on your dealership, um, you know, we're going to go get you the cheapest leads that we define as quality. You might say, I don't want that. I have you know, a bunch of 2019 new vehicles sitting on my lot. I'm willing to pay a lot more money. And so don't spend that money on uh, you know, a uh, quality lead that's coming on a different vehicle. Go spend it on, on those really expensive leads that you need to buy, but that's worth it for me. So you go into our system, you just tell our, you know, there's a place to put it in. Hey, I want you to boost this. Boosting, done. The machine now has a priority order from the owner go after these things and we're willing to bid, bid a bit more. And that literally works. You just see those leads coming in. So I think there's where that mix comes in. You know, you, you want to, for us at least, get to that cost per quality lead. And then we do all sorts of, you know, uh, uh, gymnastics to try to do any anything possible to get sales attribution. Why? Because that's what it's all about. So we have to export the data. We have to put in all sorts of tagging on the website and in the ad campaigns just so we can go and make a sales match because frankly, the industry doesn't make it that easy to do sales matches. So we do we right. do that work to know that what we're spending the dealer's money on is driving a return on investment. And uh, and you know, and we have a point of view, which is cost per quality lead is the right way to train your technology or to orient your technology if you're not using machine learning. Um, you know, and machine learning is kind of spooky. Going back to that that previous question, like, you know, you what happens with machine learning is you want to train a machine to learn from experience, and then it makes let's call it guesses that you would not necessarily make right from information that doesn't add up so you look at a huge data set of people who come to a website you can know a lot about a person from their browser you know you can know what machine they're on device how quickly they click how their mouse moves all that stuff is visible to a piece of code on the website if you look at that and say well of these behaviors let's look at all the data sets let's look at then which of these people converted on say finance forms or phone calls right well was there any, you know, again, there's a lot of different algorithms you could use. You could use random force. You could use, uh, you know, different types of regression. You could, you would say, well, what led to good outcomes here? Um, and then the machine says, this person just hit the website. I'm going to show them offer 36. Why? I don't know. That's what the machine thinks is going to be the right offer to get the outcome that we told it is a good outcome. 
there's all sorts of new things now. You know, you train, build these adversarial networks to like fight against your machine and train it like a chess chess match against each other in order to train. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Most of the time, I don't think you need to do that level of sophistication. Uh, in in most cases, you can kind of use other more um, out of the out of the kind of easier form of technology techniques or science techniques. But in the end of the day, if you have a point of view, you make sure your technology does everything, either through machine learning, through predictive algorithms, through you know these types of testing things we've talked about, does everything to get that point of view to be successful. You then give the dealer a way to input strategy, like I don't want used, I don't want trade in, or I want to get uh, you know spend more on a certain vehicle, and then you make it transparent so the dealer at any point knows that a lead is very simply a web form fill or a phone call that has been verified because it was you know uh, verified by Google. Then you have a system that a dealer can trust and rely on and look at and understand what is going on. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the biggest thing is, is just building the trust, I mean, amongst the vendor partners, then ultimately the, the dealerships, right, working together. But the outcomes, you know, one of the things that you had mentioned, which I absolutely love. So Matt Wilson, I believe, if I recall, I'm pulling it out of my memory bank, Matt, the uh, metrics that we had talked about, those high level metrics, right, clicks and click through rate, which sure, you can give that a lot of credit for, you know, for, for advertising. But Matt, what do you call those coffee table metrics? Is that right? Do I recall that correctly? Vanity metrics. Vanity metrics. Vanity, oh, vanity metrics. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. So what does that mean for me and my dealership? Right. What, what did it get me, right? So I think that's one of the things, uh, you know, and especially this uh, cost per quality lead, right? CPL. Uh, CPQL. CPQL, right. Quality lead. That's I mean, it right here. CPQL. We had a previous yeah. episode with, uh, you know, an individual who discussed QSPs, right? Quality prospects. But the whole thing is this. I think what dealers need to understand now hearing from two experts in the industry, two experts that represent vendor partners of dealers that are really representing some forward thinking technologies, QSP or, uh, you know, cost per quality lead, CPQL, uh, that is what dealers really need to ask or get from their vendor partners. You know, uh, stop looking at these vanity metrics. That's old. Okay. Yes, you might have some success looking at vanity metrics, but really when all is said and done, I think the biggest thing is, you know, or biggest takeaway from this conversation, ask about machine learning and automation, trust the process, right? Once you give this machine some data, some input so it can learn, and then ultimately look at those costs, you know, per quality leads. And, and I mean, can you tell us, I'm sure it varies based upon OEM, brand, so on and so forth, um, what is a for dealers, right? If they're utilizing machine learning or if they're not, what is a uh, reasonable cost per lead? I mean, is it a monetary amount that we could label on there? Is it a range? Yeah, I mean, I can throw some out, but it, and I will, but it's 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 going to depend on a lot of factors, as you pointed out. Um, so I definitely would not get myself into like, okay, here's what the benchmark for the industry. We internally have a lot of benchmarks, like you can see these like living graphs where we want to track against our own performance because we typically right now, you know, are doing very well in the market, so we like to beat ourselves. But also, mm -hmm. we we are able to monitor other costs per lead uh, from you know other people out there doing the stuff we're doing, both on the website and and the advertising. What I would say is this, like, again, I don't want to get into specifically necessarily, but I'll give you kind of the ranking. Sure. The, the cheap leads are typically going to be, again, it's not true in every market. So, so keep this in mind. But yeah. obviously, if you buy your own brand name, you know, which Google recommends you do, and I know dealers hate it. Uh, and, you know, I, I think every vendor should make that an option, right? We obviously in our system, it's all automated. Our account managers or the dealer go in, turn it on, turn it off. But if you're in a competitive market, if there is competition on your, your name, right? Google says you want to own the page. You know, again, on Google, that's going to be your cheapest lead. Um, you're then going to see that your most expensive leads typically are used VIN related leads or uh, new VIN related leads. That doesn't mean you don't want to do them. It just means that, again, if you're thinking about like a strategy and you want to suck all the oxygen on the market, you probably want to grab everything you can on like the lower part of the spectrum, be it the brand or be it like one level up like dealer near me you know uh honda dealer nearby or dodge dealer nearby whatever it is and then above that you're going to look at things like um i don't know some of these like trade-in stuff and comp competitor targeting to try to take some some deals away from competitors that you're targeting through certain audiences uh and then more generic model stuff all the way up to the vins uh and when you get to the vins 
it can be pretty expensive. Uh, what what we see sometimes, and you know, this is where we love seeing our tech do interesting things, is sometimes we find some keywords that are like long tail. So you know, they may not get a lot of clicks. A lot of Google trained marketers, you know, from five, six, seven years ago, would say that's bad. They're keywords that aren't getting a lot of clicks. Zero clicks. Get them off your account. Not necessarily. If you're fishing in a lake and you have endless amounts of, of bait, you have endless amounts of bobbers and rods and endless amount of deaths and you have endless amounts of hands to operate them. What's the problem with, you know, if there's one fish in the water who wants a very specific thing, leave it out there as long as you're not penalized for it. And, you know, Google's changed the way it, it looks at that stuff. So I think like that's going to be your spectrum. And on the low end, you do not want to be paying a lot of money. Let's put it that way. You know, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, 18, but I don't know what it is. It depends on the market, but not a lot. On the high end, you could be paying 130 bucks, uh, 120. The question becomes, do you want to go after those uh, uh, before you've maxed out all the rest or or uh, only after? And that's where dealer strategy comes in, right? Right. Um, so again, you want to know which of those leads converts to sale at a faster velocity or at a more uh, high uh, uh, uh definition or a high, uh, what's called fidelity, then you probably would want to prioritize that. If not, you deprioritize it. So it's, it's this game of figuring it all out all the time. Uh, and you eventually will come out with what you hope is the best results for this one moment. It'll change tomorrow. It changes on the weekends, right? So we do portfolio level bidding when a dealer lets us, we don't like the dealer to say, here's Facebook, here's Google. We prefer, they say, here's money for advertising. Let the system determine when to move it between different, uh, uh pockets. Because if there's a lot of a big uptick on, the, on a certain day on Facebook and we see we're getting good action there, move some money, vice versa, right? So, you know, I, those are my, my answers is, is, is probably like as helpful as I can get for the dealer. You didn't actually give us a number, but that's okay. We're not going to hold you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 a, a a lot there. I put out numbers. <laughs> You know, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned liking, you know, liking it when a dealer says, okay, here's, here's the money. Let us spend it across the portfolio. You know, you spend it how you see best to spend it from my perspective too, as well. You know, I'm in an agency and we specialize in OTT, right? So, you know, one of the things that, you know, that dealers will say is, okay, you know, here's $10,000 for my OTT and our OTT includes display, right? And they reside in the same silo. And so then a dealer will say, oh, you know, how much of my budget went to OTT and how much went to display? And we'll say, well, is that really relevant? Like the, we let the system adjust based on what's driving a conversion the most. And a dealer might say, well, you know, I want 70% of my budget on OTT and I don't want any more than that. I don't want any more than 40, 70, 80, 90, 100, any more than 30% on display. And really from, from your perspective, like, does it really matter? You know, the whole point is to is to point towards a conversion. What's the difference if half of it is on Facebook, half of it is on Google, half you know, a quarter is on display? How do you how do you talk to a dealer about the fact that the location of the ad is really irrelevant? It's what's driving the conversion. Truth is, Matt, if I'm for a lot of dealers, I would tell them definitely tell your people where to spend the money because dealers often have a better sense than whoever they're working with, an account manager or whatever, again, unless that person's really experienced, mm -hmm. you tell them, you're a dealer, you know, you've got a sense, you've been working in the trenches for a long time. Let like, in, unless, and this is the, the the caveat, there's some point of view there or some infrastructure, some real technology that, that can do it better than what a person could do it. So I would actually, I would always, if I was, you know, if I was a dealer and I was working with a, a more traditional agency who have their benefits and, and do a tremendous amount of good things, like I'm not trying to rag on the traditional agency, mm -hmm. I would absolutely tell the dealer, the agency, unless it was a super experienced account manager, this amount here, this amount there. But the minute I get a technology platform that knows how to move and I believe in what they're telling me, meaning I look at it, I see it, mm -hmm. go, take it make me the best Romy, the best return on marketing investment that I can get. And here, by the way, I would say, like we find in many markets, we do really well. Uh, we see that Facebook does really well with used. Um, in other markets, weirdly, once in a while, you find, no, it's not, there's new, there's new action on Facebook. Or, you know, again, we are CPQL. So for us, it's about the cost per quality leads that, you know, but where we can get, we can get used VIN off of Facebook really, really well compared to say, uh, what it would take on maybe a Google search, uh, or not on a Google search, but on Google writ large. And mm -hmm. the other thing I would say is that our, um, like 
you got to be modest about it. And like we 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 work all the time here. I mean, we've got a really significant technology team of top tier developers who are in house. This is not a you know this is like in house again. Nothing against an offshore, but an in house means that they can be on the call with dealers all the time. They're always uh, looking at the data. They're they're fully engaged and deep in the tech, and it's our product. It's all built by us, and we really think through the the different connection points again to have that kind of one hub for uh, marketing. So uh, on the website, think about this. I bring someone in from an ad click on a certain incentive offer, a dealer offer, you know, some finance or lease offer that they have, or a OEM incentive that's running right now in the market. Bring them to the website. You know what? I want to make sure no matter what that they're landing, not because I built a landing page, it's just be dynamic. Whatever they come in on, I want to make sure that the site is messaging to them that particular thing when they hit. Why? Because that's the best customer experience. You only do that when you have the one. The data in CRM, you've got to take that data and get it to Google, Facebook. You've got to get that to your website, sort of, to know that when someone's on the website, what was the context they were in last time they were there? Let's make sure they're being engaged with some element of like familiarity uh, in terms of the data and the information and the products they're seeing. So those are the things that like I think make the difference when you're dealing with technology versus uh, humans uh, or it's human strategy, technology execution. If I was working with a, a more human uh, execution shop, which is fine, I would definitely have a lot more input as a dealer, do this, do that, put it here, put it there, because I trust my own instincts as much as I trust the you know junior account manager, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's very good. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are going to say, all right, machine learning, automation, marketing, all of that, and all the other acronyms we talked about today. What was it? Hold on, let's do a recap. We had one, we had QSPL, we had Romy. What was that one? Romy? What was Romy one more time? Return. That was Return Investing. Hey, oh it's like goodness. an alphabet, alphabet soup of a podcast here, right? That was the. Yes, uh, I mean, I think Matt and I had addressed this at one point in time. We just love in our industry all of these different acronyms. I think that's just we kind of sit here and are like, oh, yes, I'll, I'll make that an acronym and so on and so forth. I love that. Yeah, by the way, I, I when we, we we were not in auto five years ago, right? We came from outside. We were in more like general market tech stuff. And I I mean, it was such a crash course to just understand what anyone was saying at any point. I mean, I'd be in a call, I was like, oh, it's the PVR and the ROs. And I'm like, I don't know what you were talking about right now. You know, it's, it was it took it took a while to pull that in uh, and add that to the tech side. But uh, yes, there are many acronyms and uh, abbreviations. What can we do? But it's but it's fun. We love keeping up with everything, the acronyms, the technology, the great work you guys are doing. You guys do. You guys do. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. So with that, folks, uh, it's not. I don't know if it's going to be on the screen. I apologize, but I'll do it right here for you. If you want to learn more about Auto Lead Star, simply go to autoleadstar.com. The other thing, which we did mention during the podcast, is there you go. Beautiful. Uh, that Auto Lead Star actually has its own podcast, which I highly recommend you listen to. That's the uh -huh. Inside Auto Podcast. And you can actually uh, access that via autoleadstar.com. I will tell you this from personal experience. You know, we are uh, utilizing the software, the machine, if you will, for some of our dealerships at the Nielsen Automotive Group. Um, you know, we're still testing it out and i think for us though it's it's been a really fruitful uh partnership thus far so thank you for that thanks for all the hard work that your team's doing and thank you for all your knowledge uh today we really appreciate it thank you thank you guys this was great all right awesome everyone that was aharon horwitz the ceo of auto lead star next generation marketing with machine learning and marketing automation Trust the machines, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's the moral of today's episode. You still need to control the machines, but you need to trust the machines. So what do you think, Matt Wilson? I think you just hit it on the head at the end there. You need to control the machines, but trust the machines. Yeah, as he was talking, <laughs> and you were talking early on about, you know, hearing about um, you know, automation marketing and being like, oh man, well, are dealer groups gonna need marketing people? Yeah. I think there's three things that came to mind, right, when he was talking. The machine doesn't know if you have a 45-day supply of something. It needs to be told that. The machine doesn't know if there's a blizzard bearing down on the Northeast. And the machine doesn't know if, God forbid, some kind of tragedy happens uh, in the country. Those things need to be told to the machine by a human being. And that's why people like you need jobs. 
So there you go. There you go. That's that. I love it. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's just end it with this. Please do not to forget to subscribe to both the Mostly Automotive Marketing with Matt Wilson uh, channel on YouTube. Do not forget to subscribe to the Xterra Marketing Podcast on YouTube. Of course, connect with us on LinkedIn, both Matt Wilson and I. We look forward to new connections and new conversations. Stay in touch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. That's another episode of Experiment Marketing, and we will catch you next time.